So a major topic uh, um, at this meeting were um, ETK inhibition. Uh, and I think uh, the talks really nicely illustrated that BTK inhibition is one of the cornerstones of treatment of Alzheimer's macroglobulinemia. We have seen that, um, let's say, uh, continuous um, inhibition um, of uh, uh, BTK by, for instance, zanoprostenib is a very powerful tool for our Alzheimer's patients to control disease. But we also have seen new developments and so. Uh, new developments in the sense that we are trying to move from continuous treatment of uh, covalent PTK inhibitors such as zanobotanib to fixed duration treatment by um, adding, for instance, uh, to ibotanib or to zanobotanib a second partner such as venetoclax um, with the idea to, for instance, uh, limit the duration of treatment for um, up to two years. So another, uh, actually perspective we have seen is the use of non-covalent BTK inhibitors, such as pyrtoprotinib. Uh, so there are very, uh, interesting data showing that also in patients being, uh, or becoming resistant to covalent BTK inhibitors, pyrtoprotinib is still active uh, with a very nice, uh, uh, um, and low toxicity profile. And we have learned that there is a new class, um, of BTK inhibitors, the so-called BTK degraders. Um, these are early data from phase one, phase two clinical trials, but they show that also in patients being resistant to covalent PTK inhibitors, these drugs are very powerful, very efficient, and also associated with a low toxicity profile. 